Hey, how are you doing, Storytime Grown-Ups? All right, if you haven't watched any of these yet, my name is Miss Lisa, and I get to do the Storytimes at Worthington Park Library normally. Um, but for right now, while we are doing Storytimes virtually, I'm also doing these little videos with some ideas of things that you can try at home with your preschooler or older toddler or younger grade schooler. All right, our theme this week was just for fun. So I thought we would look at some of our favorite activities to do and do them. So the first idea I had is that you can build, but you can build with your favorite things, like if you have a favorite blocks or Duplos or let's see, snow. If we get enough snow, you could build with snow. Um, I was also thinking that if you wanted, you could build with some of your recyclables around your house, maybe from the kitchen, like boxes and things like that. Um, so building is our first idea. The second idea I had is that you can make a mosaic with your favorite colors or with your child's favorite colors, um, where you rip up the paper, have them rip up the paper or cut up the paper into small pieces, glue it all down to be a beautiful mosaic. And you can use, especially if you have a couple different favorite colors, it makes it really beautiful. Um, you can use a plate as the basis for that, a paper plate, or if you have construction paper at home that's pretty sturdy, that'll work really nicely. The next idea I had is that you can draw, it says just draw, but what I was thinking is, have your little one draw a picture of themselves doing something they really love to do, something they find very fun. Um, it might be a good indicator too for you of what types of things they really cherish doing together. Um, so like one of my kids might draw baking together, which is our next idea. Um, but one of my kids right, might just draw snuggling. And then I know that that's what one of them wants from me and that that's what the other one wants from me. So that might be helpful in finding out what their favorite activity is. Maybe they like to go hiking, maybe. Uh, maybe they just like to sit and watch TV, in which case you can do that together once in a while. Yeah. All right, the next idea I had is learning to make their favorite food together. So depending on how complicated their favorite dish is, you can work on learning to cook that together. Um, pretty much any kid at any age can be with you in the kitchen, but you do definitely want to make sure you go over some safety rules um, but when we're working on learning to cut, they're working on those fine motor skills. When they're working on following directions, that's going to help them later with their reading skills. Um, so it might feel like you're not really doing anything when they're just with you cooking and making the mess bigger. But you are making um, some strides in their learning, which is fantastic. I forgot to tell you what all the other things we're working on. When we're working on building, that builds our engineering skills. Um, it helps us with our problem solving, which is so important. Um, preschoolers really need to fail and to make mistakes and to learn from them. So when we build something and it falls over, that helps us learn how to build it in the future. Um, so building in whatever medium they choose is really great for them. Making the mosaic, however they would like to make the mosaic, is really good for their fine motor because when they're tearing, they're working on these muscles, uh, which are really necessary for writing. If they're cutting, they're working on these, which are also necessary for writing. Either way, they're building their fine motor skills. With a self-portrait drawing, they're working, obviously, on their writing skills. Um, and let's see, oh, the next idea I had was if you happen to have any pudding around the house, you could make up some pudding together. And then I wrote right over here. But what I was thinking is if you have a clean spot on your kitchen table or you want to put down a cookie sheet or something, you could put the pudding into there and let them practice their letters. A lot of kids really enjoy getting to practice their letters with different textures. So anytime that we can introduce a different texture and still practicing their letters, that's a great way to do it. So if they're writing in rice, if they're writing in, um, in pudding, if they're stamping it in in Play-Doh or making the letter out of Play-Doh and feeling that, fantastic for their, uh, their reading skills. 
Also, when they're writing, always make sure that you're asking what the letter is, but what sound it makes. And trying to think of things that start with that sound, things like that. Any extension you can do in that way helps them when they're starting to read. Mm -mm. So I know it's a little bit of a mess. And if your little one does not like that texture, you don't have to do that. Obviously, you can think of something else. Maybe they just want to eat the pudding. You could do it with yogurt, too. I am I think that would probably get gross a little bit faster than the pudding. But you could definitely do it with what type of food they like that's kind of that texture. Um, if they don't like any of those types of textures, you can always put it into a baggie. And they can write on the baggie with their finger and then eat the pudding later. It would still be fine, right? Probably. All right, the last idea I had is that you can fill up a sensory bin with some of your favorite things and explore them that way. So if your little one's really into splashing water, you can put just a tiny bit of water down the bottom of the sensory bin and put in some boats or something else, maybe some sea creatures, that'd be fun. Um, if they seem to enjoy playing with the textures of beans or rice, you could use those. Um, and if you're using dry beans and dry rice, you really can rinse them off and use them still to cook. Um, if it's just your little one playing with them, it's not that bad. I, I have a pretty low germ threshold, though. All right, and then you can put things into it like pom-poms that they're searching for. Um, use those tweezers if you can. Because anytime we use tweezers, guess what we're working on? I know, I'm obsessive. Those writing skills, man. All right, I hope that gave you a few quick and easy ideas. We went Rolo prep this week too, so whatever you have around your house or apartment will work great. So improvise with what you have. If you don't have any of those things, you know what? You can go outside and build with rocks. Um, you can do a mosaic with fallen leaves. We've actually done that. It turns out beautiful. Um, so you can you can get creative if if that's too many supplies. Um, I'm always happy to help you. Ooh, sorry, uh, help you improvise and try to think of new ideas, um, even if you don't have the supplies. So please let me know. You can send a message to Worthington Libraries and I'll try to help you come up with some new ideas. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Good luck with this stay at home preschool thing. We miss you. Bye.